Hey, Geneva. And Elena, again, are you a glutton for punishment? They keep telling me to come, so I come. <laughs> That's great. Awesome. Well, I'm not sure how many folks we're going to have. I think the take home room is uh, for residents is probably going to be the most populated of the rooms this evening. Um, so why don't we just do a very quick round of introductions. Hi, I'm Geneva Hooten. I'm the city plan lead on this corridor. And with me, I have uh, Taylor. Hi there, uh, I'm Taylor Phillips and I am a planner on Geneva's team helping her out with this and I'll be taking notes and doing all of the recording things this evening. Awesome, thanks. Lauren, you wanna go? Hi everyone, I'm Lauren Howe. I live in Athmar Park and I'm also the Active Living Coalition Liaison on the Athmar Park Neighborhood Association Board. Um, just a quick question, Geneva. I live, I mean, kind of near all of these. I'm very pro bike lanes. Is it helpful to like have me go to the Tejon room? <laughs> just from like a, a commenting perspective, I wanna be useful and, you know, advocate for bikes. For sure. Um, you know, Lauren, I think if you live really close to it, then you have every kind of right to go in, into that meeting. We were, we're, we're trying pretty hard not to have folks who live in a totally different part of town in those rooms um, so that the residents directly um, impacted don't feel like their voices are being drowned out. And I don't think that would be the case. So if you want to go, um, totally feel free to. Um, it's up to you. Okay, thank you. Um, all right, Gavin, Emily, or Elena, one of you want to introduce yourselves? Sure, I'll go real quick. Um, I'm Gavin Weiss. I'm with uh, the city as well. I'm more sitting in on these. Uh, I've got a couple projects coming up, so I'm trying to get an idea of kind of these public outreach and how this all works. So this is more just an experience, uh, kind of learning how you guys do it thing. Awesome. And hey, Gavin, I would actually recommend that you, I, I know who you are now, I'm remembering. I would recommend that you go and observe the Tejon room. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that something I can switch myself or do I need to yeah. message yes, someone? Yes, you can. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Okay. Sorry, guys, but I know that somewhat contradicts what I just said, but he uh, he's sort of our counterpart and I know he wants to learn how these go. Um, Emily or Lena? Sure, I'll go. Um, hi, uh, I know actually a good you know, few of you on the call. I'm Emily Kleinfelter. I'm the Community Outreach Coordinator with Denver Streets Partnership. Um, so here to learn and advocate for, for all the great work you guys are doing. Uh, Elena McCall. Um, so I, I work actually with the Highway Safety Office with CDOT. Um, it's a new role for me. Um, so I'm hoping to learn a little bit about if there's anything we can do to be um, grow with this. Um, and then also as an avid bike rider in this area, I have a lot of friends that live over here. So my usual route is Alameda to La Pond and then up into the neighborhood. So I'm very excited about some of these efforts. Thanks, Elena. Um, cool. And we'll have to chat about CDOT at some point, by the way. Um, so, you know, it's a really small group of us tonight. Uh, so I feel like any questions that you all have, we have plenty of time to answer. Um, we have the slide deck and all of the role plots available and we can pull them up and walk through designs if that would be helpful. Um, so just, just let us know if you have questions. I'm really curious about you mentioned earlier in the call about um, changes around railroad tracks. And for me, that's a big uncomfortable thing to cross a lot. You know, I cross the one on 13th every day and that one, if anyone's ever had to wait for that freight train, um, you understand my pain. Um, so I'm curious like what types of things you're doing to help um, make that more comfortable. Yeah, it's a good question. So on, for most of the projects that I've worked on, I actually don't have railroad crossings. It is only the Virginia crossing at La Pan. 
um, at least for these corridors. That's and a weird one. So it is super weird. And yeah, I can pull up the um, the concept. You have to angle your bike a certain way to cross it so you make sure you don't get stuck in the tracks. Yep, exactly. So can you guys see? Yeah, you can see this, right? My screen? Yep, yeah, it's a long skinny line. Okay, great. Um, so let me zoom in. So something else that is a constraint and challenge is anytime that we make a change to the railroad stop control, even maybe with some of the striping that we have proposed, that we have to get an agreement with the Public Utilities Commission and with the railroad itself that adds one layer of challenge. One of the reasons why, and not, I'm not just, that's not to say that we're not still working on it, um, just to say that that's one reason why that it can be challenging. Here, when we looked at adding stop control for Le Pan, one of them would be here. And then the other, unfortunately, would have to be so far back from the intersection because of the skew of the railroad. And so because of that, it's actually not, um, it's, it is in some ways even more unsafe because a, someone here might think that they have the right of way, they're entering into intersection, but someone here isn't going to see that they have the right of way. So we evaluated this and just found that with, with the existing alignment of that railroad and kind of the geometry of the street that we couldn't add that in um, and ha still have it be a safe crossing. So that's why that is challenging. And then for, for Virginia crossing, we're adding in kind of a half curb extension here. We're adding in a curb extension on this corner as well. So our hope is that bikes are going to come here. We're going to have a more dedicated place to be on the street on either side of the intersection. And turning movements are also going to be slowed because of the curb extension itself. That's interesting. Yeah, I always come down the pond to get onto Virginia. I don't take the plat because you have to cross over Alameda or Mississippi to get to the other side. So taking the plat, it takes more time. Right. Right. I get it. So is, is that why you can't make that a four-way stop? It's really just because of this. Um, can you see my cursor? Oh, because the tr the the rail lines are so awkward. Okay, I see what you're saying. Exactly, exactly. So if, no, that's not what I wanted. So the stop line would have to be here. Oh, okay. That yeah. is so awkward. And so, mm -hmm. so that's one, that's just one of the reasons why that didn't work. Okay. And there's nothing like curb bulb out wise that you can do there. Cause I've, I just know that coming there sometimes turning traffic tends to like speed up and mm -hmm. if I'm coming like I just would worry about them maybe not seeing me as I'm coming through the intersection if there isn't a stop sign um mm -hmm. like is there so any we room we can't yeah we can't add curb extensions so I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see it clear um so because of where the railroad tracks are and kind of the the span of the tracks are this wide, but a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The thing, the container is wider than that. So a curb extension would be with like too close to that. And it would probably also have to go in front of the railroad and public utilities commission. Um, and similar to this uh, up here, um, maybe that's something that we can, we can paint in. Um, I think that that might be something that's added in, um, but just with the general skew, it's a pretty tough, tough alignment. Yeah, I feel like even something painted on the ground, some kind of yield or it's just the area is so warehousey that there's so many big trucks going down this road. And so it's mm -hmm. not just regular car traffic, it's these truck traffic that makes it feel even more dangerous because the road is so wide right there. And it's mm -hmm. so desolate that you're <laughs> just like someone's gonna hit me. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely hear you on that. 
there's a um some of the quarters we have in town that are very warehousey. It's just you can tell there's even less the consciousness of like other types of riders being on those roads. Yes, and that's one of the reasons why we changed the facility type. The original facility recommendation was for a neighborhood bikeway straight through to the South Platte. And that just didn't quite fit what was going on on the street. So that's really why here we have, um, you know, a pinch point, pure traffic calming neighborhood bikeway. And then we, we transition into the striped facility. It widens out a little bit and here we're able to add in the buffer. Okay. So hopefully some of this will help improve how that area feels and especially for kind of connecting people from the trail as they come off the trail and are going on Virginia, that that transition works better. Yeah, okay. Emily, go ahead. Um, um, so I was over at the Denver Water Building um, on Monday to for some of the site visit for the World Day of Remembrance event on Sunday, and they were mentioning that that bridge has only been shut because of COVID. Um, and I just I I don't ever recall it being open. But I looking at the map, you know, and when I was over there, I was seeing like this is a really it make it made sense as far as a connection to the trails. Like you could just keep taking Tejon. Um, it kind of does a weird little jot around there, but I was just curious if there had been any thought or conversation around just that, like continuing the the network, right, and like f finishing off those connections so that um, it's a, it's fully everybody's able to to get everywhere. Um, yeah, yeah, I I think that the full bridge connection to the trail has been closed for quite a long time. I think that it used to be that during the day you could use the bridge. Um, you couldn't actually access the trail, but you could kind of go on it. Um, mm. In terms of it being like a more permanent openness, um, that's a good question. I, I don't have an answer to that, um, but it's something that we can definitely ask. Yeah, it's just one of the right. things when I looked over there, I was like, you know, I, I took the trail to get there on the bike and was like, well, I can't access the the building from the trail side. So I had to go all the way around through, like by um, Alameda and then yeah. and get off of it. And so yeah. it was one of those things where I could have cut off probably a good 10, 15 minutes or something like that. Um, we're just making it a straighter route. Yeah, that's a great point. I've had to do that same finagling. Jog around. Yeah. It's yeah. a good point. Other, um, other design questions or things that you want us to walk you through? Okay, I'm curious. I know that when I saw your one diagram, you had dots like kind of around Tejon and parts of Alameda and there was an orange around the Alameda connection. Is something going to happen there in the future? Like the Alameda La Pond connection or like Alameda Plaque connection? I, I'm trying to. I saw it highlighted, so I'm just curious because I'm. My hope is that someday that will be a comfortable connection. <laughs> yeah, one second. I think I know what you're talking about. I'm going to look at it on our map. I just got really excited when I saw something was highlighted. <laughs> um. So I'm, I'll share my screen, Elena, and you can show me where you're. What you're talking about. So you are you saying this right here? Is that Alameda? I can't tell the oh yeah. Yeah, you so see yeah. how it's yellow right there? Like Alameda to Platte, the um the horizontal. One. Yeah. yeah. So this is showing this is showing that it, it's an existing shared use path. Oh, uh, um, so you've not, there's no update there. Okay. And this though is a CDOT project actually. Um, I don't know exactly the status of it, but I know that this is in the works, this um, this okay. short connection on LePan. Okay, yeah, no, I'm yeah. most concerned with the Alameda across connection and then the intersection at Santa Fe. Um, that's where it's very, very scary. 
yeah. and that's where I hope at some point you all will be doing a big project to to connect both sides of 25 <laughs> in a more comfortable way right right yeah or even if you took on Mississippi I'd take that too hopefully our hope is that Virginia is going to be a really good east-west connection and then just from a network perspective once once Tejon goes in and this really short segment of Tennessee we need to do a little bit of wayfinding through the park for kind of contra flow and then you have like a totally consistent way to go all the way to Sheridan through Kentucky. That'll so. be nice too for people that are going that far out. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. And then the last one, I well, Emily, am I interrupting? Do you have another question? I did have or one question, you? but go ahead. Oh, I wanted to look uh, more deeply at the um, improvements to, I think it was the Tejon Alameda crossing and see what you did there. Cause Alameda is always one of those big uh, roads that no one likes to cross. And I see that we have Jamie joining us in the room. Hi, Jamie. Hey, yeah, I was just, I was the only person who was not a city employee in the Virginia room. So uh, ran out of things to talk about and came to join you here. Okay, that sounds great. Hi. Hi. Um, where am I? Here we are. Where, nope, sorry, I'm abstracted. Uh, all right, so pretend, pretend that this is oriented in the right way. Uh, Elena. So okay. north is north is here. Maybe I can just flip the um, rotate view. You want to rotate it counterclockwise? Yeah, there we go. Um, so at on the north side of the intersection, so there's like a little strip mall here, a little dentist office. I've used their restroom randomly on a field visit. Uh, so we have protected bike lanes on either side north. And then at the intersection, um, we're proposing like a refresh to the crosswalks, conflict markings across. And then it's really quite narrow. It's only 35 feet um, just south of the intersection. So that's where we have um, buffer slash vertical elements on the west side of the street, and then just a striped bike lane on the east side of the street. We are proposing to remove the left turn bay pocket. The left turn lane? Okay. People, people can still make left-hand turns, but they're not going to have a dedicated um, like half lane to queue for that. Sorry, what's this cross street? Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, I just couldn't tell which cross street that was. Oh yeah, Alameda. no problem, I know. It's kind of goofy. So this is at um, Tejon and Alameda. Oh, Tejon, okay, thanks. Yeah, yeah. Are there so, flex posts on the north side? I can't tell. There should be, they may not be showing up in the- Are they yeah, like there. the ones you put in on 13th? Yep, okay. yep. So the, the line, is the rubber curb. And then the tiny little, tiny little line is a, um, is a flex post. I like and that it looks, goes all the way up to the intersection line so people know where their place is. Are you gonna be doing the thing here where the walk sign starts early? You know, I'm not sure if we're able to make that kind of a signal change. Um, Alameda is, is a CDOT facility. And so we we are coordinating with them on this project. And mm. that's definitely something that we can ask and see if it's possible. I have noticed where that is happening. It is really nice. Mm -hmm. It feels really good as a bicyclist. Yeah. Definitely. Cool. Um, yeah, so I have, I can pull up the other roll plots. Are there other places that you all have questions or want to see? I do have a question for you. If you could give a little more detail about um, this loading zone at, for KIPP Elementary, I think it was. I just, mm -hmm. um, I understand, but I also 
I'm gonna probably push back a little bit because while I think from what I'm understanding is that there's a removal of the protected bike lane, is that what you're saying at the loading zone? So we actually have never, and none of the concepts did we have a protected bike lane adjacent to the school right here in front okay. of Kip. Um, and that is pretty common throughout Denver and just knowing, um, Knowing the, the unique challenges that schools have, and particularly this campus, there are four different schools on one block. Um, and so because of all of those different challenges, that's why we are retaining the loading zone. There's also an existing ADA spot in front of the school um, and providing at any other time of the day that is not school loading, which is most hours of the day. Um, bikes can go adjacent to the curb and they effectively have a 10 foot bike lane, um, but it won't, there won't be a vertical element there next to Kip. Is there a way to like shift the bike lane along Dakota and skip that side of Kip? Because it is a nightmare during school loading zones over there. I'm not quite following. What would that look like? So like when you're getting in front of the school, you would turn uh, to the east and head along mm -hmm. Dakota and just kind of skirt one block over and then go back and rejoin Tejon after the school. Yeah, that's, that's not something that we looked at. Um, there is data to say that the more times that a bicyclist has to go out of direction, mm -hmm. the less likely that it's going to happen. Um, and sometimes that is a fate that we cannot avoid, um, right. whether that's because of an existing signal or there's an existing bridge, you know, there are lots of constraints. On a street like this, my guess is that enough people would probably just try to continue going on Tejon and not try mm -hmm. to make a bunch of turns. Um, I think it's a, it's a really interesting idea, but it's not something that we typically do. Fair enough. Would Maybe just I'm like a, during the school hours, go this way or something, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. I like the yeah. idea of planning around though, like how do we plan around school pick up and drop off? Because it does seem pick up and drop off is a problem at all schools in Denver. You know, if anyone's um, biked by uh, Marion Street, by Wash Park around pick up drop off, you've probably mm -hmm. like thought you're gonna die by some drivers dropping their kids off. Yes, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> they're the most distracted at this point. <laughs> So I, I like like further conversation around like how to maybe like redesign pick up drop off like everywhere. <laughs> you know, if there's a standard. I would for love that. that. Works. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I don't know what that looks like, but you know. Also maybe there a way are... to make them stop idling their cars. <laughs> right, right. Um, definitely understand that is that is a challenge and we have stopped staff at Dottie that are focused on safe routes to school. And a lot of this is very, very, very tiny. It's like extremely myopic focused because it has to be very school driven and um, community driven in terms of what does that look like? And what are those barriers that are preventing people from feeling comfortable for their kids to walk or bike or take transit to school? Um, so that is, I would say, you're right, Elena, it's a huge issue. It's also, there are Folks are working on some of those strategies. And ultimately, I think, you know, if you zoom in and look at this one half of one block of Tejon and say, there's not a protected bike lane there, I can't believe it. Okay, mm -hmm. but if you kind of zoom out and say, we're creating miles of a neighborhood bikeway right. and a mile and a half of a protected bike lane that overall, we think that that is going to have a bigger impact on getting kids to school safely. So yeah. if you look at the bigger yeah. picture, I think, out know, is, is a good is a good tactic. Yeah, I was just thinking about the like safety of bicyclists around cars who are very distracted or drivers who are very distracted. Yeah, totally hear you. Um, also, Emily, I was oh sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no problem, Jamie. Emily, looks like your hand is up. Yeah, I just wanted to if you could scroll back, um, I guess is it yeah, a little bit up to like right there where the loading zone was. In the intersection with Alaska, I think it is. Um, I was just noticing that there wasn't, if you can go just a little bit further, um, that the Shero marking for where you're saying is going to be this like 10 foot wide bike lane 
Um, I'm just wondering if there is an ability to put a Shero in that space. I'm just noticing that there's like a good amount of space there. I guess I guess there is a Shero there in that bike lane, but if it, it could be moved over some, I don't know what the word, like what I'm looking for, but just something that kind of identifies that this space, despite that during that time when it's for loading for school is for cars, that the rest of the time people should know that this is a space that's um, really more dedicated for bikes to, f to ride safely. And um, I don't know if it's maybe like possible to even get like the little, like I, I noticed further up, you have the green uh, symbols around the bike symbol. Um, if like that could be placed there instead of just the Shero. I don't, I know that's probably not MUTCD standards or anything like that, but um, just looking at, at kind of clearly identifying as you're getting up to that stop sign, especially where, so you don't have a bike and a car having to compete for that, that space there at the stop sign. Um, I think that's really something that we might end up with um, hearing from the, the community is that like, oh, I, it's great. And then I get to the stop sign and I'm having to like race and compete with a car for who got there first, whose turn is it? And like, that's often where we come sometimes see it, you know, crashes occurring is the, misunderstanding of who's there first, who goes, who yields. Um, so just yeah. any, yeah, any way of like clearly identifying that, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can work on that. With this being a three-way stop, I am a lot less concerned about some of the crash behavior. Um, we typically don't see as many crashes when it's always stop control. It's only when it is like at an Alameda, um, at a Bayod. Uh, so noted I think maybe we can work on the that design of making it clear during non non um school hours what that looks like for sure so it's good feedback I was going to ask do you have any like good thoughts about those offset intersections like the Virginia one specifically that yes. I, I ride down Virginia a lot to get to the plat mm -hmm. and that is like such a dangerous intersection I think because cars just can't see very well but lots of people run the light there so or run the um, stop sign yeah it is um this this intersection is a challenge that is for sure um this is what we have proposed is, I think it's going to help, um, mostly because of what's right here with this little median pedestrian refuge. By having that, it means that anyone who is turning, for instance, if you're trying to make this turn, mm -hmm. and then with, we can't add any vertical here because this is a fire hydrant, mm. but that is a lot tighter than someone who could just go like this. Yes, definitely. Diagonal. Yeah. So I think I... I'm I think that's sure great, that actually. That's going to help. And then adding more of this delineation of the curb extensions, the striping, re refreshing the crosswalk, um, straightening out the stop bar. I think that all of these things together are going to start helping this feel like a more regulated area and a little less of a free for all of people who are trying to get across either, cool. either way. Yeah. Yeah, is that the one that Tejon goes past, like Pacific Ocean Market, further north there? Um, not quite. That of... is at um, Zuni. That is on Zuni. Yeah. Okay. Never mind them. No, it's the same. It's confusing. It's like the but it, same. It's the same type of intersection. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Can I ask a random question? Sure. Uh, for some of these, like the areas you're actually redesigning, I don't remember because I bike more in them more than I walk. Um, I don't know if any of them are like half half sidewalks because mine be pretty over here on the east side is half half sidewalk land. Yes. Um, I don't know if there's spots where you're if you're redesigning like curb cuts or anything where like you're extending that sidewalks too. Is that happening? Unfortunately, not. Uh, there, there is a. A, a big opportunity and a big need for, for wider sidewalks in this neighborhood. And unfortunately, those either widening or changing the curb cuts are not part of the scope of this project. 
Um, that said, when, when possible, we're trying to integrate other projects. So for instance, like at um, Jason Street or South Platte Trail and Virginia, that other project is adding in curb extensions. And so we're saying, great, can you also add in an ADA ramp so bikes that are going towards the trail can just jump on the ramp and not have to mm -hmm. use the one. That's um, so kind of as possible, we're integrating other projects, but overall, okay. unfortunately, it's, it's not. Okay. Um, well, team, I'm definitely happy to stay and, and keep chatting. We don't have a um, sort of end of, we're not bringing everyone back into the main room after the meeting. Um, so I will just share the, the key information of our last. Um, so, sorry. I'm telling you. Oh boy, can I just go from the slide? Really? Okay, well, we'll just stay on this and just pretend. Um, so if you go to the, the bit.ly, that's where all of the 60% designs are up. Um, and we are opening them for over a month. So the comment period will end on Sunday, December 19th. And then as always, you can email the project team. We have office hours, and then we have a hotline as well. Is that a bit.ly? Um, Thank you, guys. Is it Thank a, you, Jamie. What's the word I'm looking for? Capitalize, is it, does the capitalization matter? It does. Um, okay. That said, we, I, I'm almost positive, we kind of own all of the iterations of the capitalization. So they'll all take you to the right place. Okay, cool. Just making sure, so as we put it out to our network, we make sure we have the right, right link. Great, this is amazing, Geneva. Thank you so much for this tonight. And I don't have as many questions because frankly, Jill wrote great notes from last week or from last night. <laughs> and I'm, you answered a lot of the similar questions last night. So don't wanna overload you with the same one. Um, thanks for coming, Emily. Yeah, thank you for putting it on. Hey, I know there's another meeting for this one, the West Side in December, but our meetings for the other regional locations also on the website, I didn't, I didn't check it. Or did they really happen? Well, no, so Elena, the, you're kind of covering it. So of the West Denver Safer Streets, we had the meeting last night, we have tonight's meeting, and then Irving and Bates are what we're going to be covering in December. Okay, but for like, um, like the Northwest or um, yeah. what is so, the South, I think is on there too? Yes, confusingly, we're all Northwest Central and South Central are all kind of in different times and stages. So Northwest, we okay. are, as far as I know, <laughs> we are done with our core designs for those corridors. Okay. We will still be working on Tejon and Lowell. Um, and those are going into this winter, just as for South La Pan on this corridor, we have more work to be doing to figure out a different alignment. Um, South Central, I believe that they have meetings coming up, but those will be in the spring um, and same with Central. So the timing okay. is a little bit different, but I don't know of any other meetings that are happening uh, in December. Oh, perfect, it was great. Good. Cool. Thank you both, have a good night. Yeah, thank you, have a great night guys. Yeah. I'm going to stop recording. <laughs>